Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Tay Kai Hong. I'm a medical doctor and a psychiatrist, right? So what a psychiatrist do is to see patients who have mental health difficulties. They include patients with anxiety, difficulties, depression, perhaps obsessive compulsive disorder, insomnia, or other emotional or cognitive uh, difficulties. And uh, what I'll do is to talk to them, assess them, sometimes speak to their family members, and uh, we'll make a diagnosis and then formulate a treatment plan for them to get better. Right. And the treatment plan may or may not include medications, but often it includes uh, some form of counseling and psychological therapy, as well as some lifestyle advice. As an old boy in this school, I also hope to support the mental health needs of the students, your families, and your perhaps even the faculty, right? The teachers and the staff. Uh, so as an old boy, and uh, as someone who is passionate in youth mental health, with a special interest in the, the, the emotional difficulties that youths uh, these days face, including academic stress, family problems, relationship issues, um, these are quite unique to, to youths, right? the, the transition phase from being a child to a teenager, adolescent, and then to a young adult. Uh, not, not to mention all of us have to go through national service, right? Uh, so these are fraught with challenges and stress, and this is where I may be able to support. Yeah, and, and this is why I like to raise awareness on mental health through, the, through your, your project. This is a common question that my patients ask me as well. So, uh, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor who specializes in the uh, assessment and treatment of mental disorders, right? And a psychiatrist will be able to prescribe medications to treat mental disorders or mental illness, right? A psychologist, uh, specifically a clinical psychologist, uh, is not a medical doctor, but they are trained in delivering psychological therapy, uh, which comes in different ways and forms. And there are more than 10, ten types of uh, different approaches that one can uh, deliver psycho psychological therapy in. So the main difference is that uh, the psychiatrist will be able to prescribe medication and can give psychological therapy, but the psychologist focuses more on psychological therapy uh, and are unable to prescribe medications. But both are uh, mental health professionals in their own right and both have a different role to play in the mental health team. One, one common misconception is that, you know, when you look at the movies, maybe you watch Wu Tian Tao, you know, and Chen Hui Ling was the psychologist, right, or the psychiatrist, right? They get the patients to lie down on the couch, and then they may do hypnosis, on the patient and get the patient to talk about the past and the childhood. Right. Psychiatry is not like that. Uh, my clinic is just like a family doctor's clinic. Uh, I use a stethoscope. I, I may take the patient's blood pressure and I talk to the patient for half an hour or one hour. And then we discuss the treatment plan, uh, which involves therapy and medications and lifestyle changes. So we practice just as like most uh, medical specialists practice. Uh, gone are the days where we get patients to lie on the couch and talk about the past and get do hypnosis. You know, um, that may be true in the past, but it's no longer true now. <laughs> yeah. So I graduated from this school. Uh, it was called the Chinese High School then. I moved on to Hua Chong Junior College. And I believe some of my teachers are still over here. <laughs> I hope to say hi to them. Um, you know, um, then I had a chance to get into medical school um, and graduate to become a doctor, after which I served my uh, army as a medical officer. Um, and when choosing our choice of uh, discipline, medical discipline that we want to specialize in, I was deciding between psychiatry and family medicine and uh, even emergency med medicine because I enjoyed um, these fields uh, more than the others. 
uh, I eventually settled on psychiatry because I feel like the psychiatry shares a special bond with the patient and uh, it's my duty to uh, know the patient well, um, get the patient to trust me, guard the patient's secrets and to guide the patient along through his difficulties and in his recovery journey. Right? So I felt um, it's probably the most humanistic, most meaningful uh, discipline in, in the whole of medicine. And that is why I chose to be a psychiatrist. I also kind of believe that mental health is just as important, if not more important than physical health. Or just like it, it's, it's more important to be contented and happy, right? And that is really part of health, right? And that is why psychiatry is an important part of medicine. Um, so I've had many patients over the years uh, who are from poly, you know, or, or JC or ITE, and uh, some of them suffer from um, very severe social anxiety. Right. And social anxiety is a condition where um, the person is so fearful of being judged negatively by other people that it impacts their school performance and their social life. For, for example, the person might not even dare to step up onto stage and to give a short presentation or could tremble in class when um, she's being asked a question right? or may not even dare to ask questions or clarify with their teachers when they are unclear, right? Uh, so you can imagine this kind of uh, social anxiety can be very impairing and can affect their school results and the way they relate to their classmates, right? And for such a condition, uh, psychological therapy has a great benefit and perhaps even some anti-anxiety medication may help also. Right? And after treatment, uh, most of them do get better and um, they they can do better in school and in their relationships. I, I think it is important to uh, be genuine and to be authentic and to connect with the patient on a personal level. Uh, because oftentimes that therapeutic relationship between the doctor and the patient is in itself uh, an ingredient for recovery. Singapore has quite an established and rich mental health scene. We have, uh, of course, our major hospitals, Tan Tok Seng and SGH. And I was previously working from at uh, St. Kang General Hospital. Right? And we also have our tertiary mental health institution, uh, which is our IMH, Institute of Mental Health. Uh, we also have many uh, psychiatrists and psychologists in private clinics as well as uh, social service agencies uh, where these non-profit organizations um, deliver mental health services in the form of social support, vocational support, financial support and counseling services. Some of these agencies are targeted at youths uh, and um, they seek to improve the mental health awareness among the youths in Singapore. Uh, and to help them cope better with life and school. Of course, there's always room for improvement uh, because um, as compared to the developed countries, uh, perhaps uh, we are still lacking, especially we are being held back by stigma. Right? And uh, the, the reason for stigma is pretty much, uh, a lot of it is ignorance, uh, or it's a lack of awareness and knowledge about mental illness and mental health. Uh, so as we become more informed and educated as a society, uh, I expect the stigma to be reduced, but it will take time. So stigma comes in many ways and form, right? Uh, we often understand stigma in terms of how society and other people judges the person with the mental, mental illness, uh, or might be depression or anxiety, or obsessive compulsive disorder. But that is, may not be the most damaging form of stigma. What is more damaging may perhaps be what I call self-stigma. Self-stigma is the judgment and prejudice 
that the, pace, the, the patient places on himself. So if the patient judges herself or himself negatively because of the mental illness and does not, does not seek help as a result, does not talk about it as a result, and chooses to suffer in silence uh, alone, then that, that in itself is a big problem. Right? Huh? So self-stigma is perhaps the most important part and barrier which we need to overcome for, for patients who start coming forward to seek help. Huh? And one of the ways we do that is to normalize you know, mental disorders and mental health difficulties. Huh? In fact, Almost all of us will know someone uh, with mental health struggles, whether it's in our family or among our friends. Well, I believe every school and every class, there, there will be uh, uh, young people, young persons with mental health difficulties. So it's really everywhere. Uh, and what we need to do is to normalize it, uh, to relate to them normally, as how we would any other person, and to provide support provide a listening ear and to encourage them uh, gradually to not be afraid to seek help. And seeking help for mental health problems is a strength rather than a weakness. Seeking help for mental health struggles and difficulties uh, is a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. And in this day and age, it is very common and many young people and young adults, uh, students in uni and in JC, come forward to seek mental health help. Okay? Uh, there is no need to be paise or to be ashamed or embarrassed. Uh, um, you um, just need to trust the system and find a suitable doctor or therapist uh, and you can finally get the help that you need. And when you do get the help that you need, you find that your, the, the trajectory of your life might change for the better. Uh, so don't be afraid to take the first step. Okay? Uh, it may or may not involve uh, taking medications, uh, but psychological therapy is definitely an effective way to treat most of the mental disorders as well. Okay? And it doesn't require, doesn't mean that you definitely need to take medications or you will definitely be diagnosed with a serious mental health condition. Most of the time, it could be just stress or insomnia or relationship problems, and you might need some guidance from an expert. If your friends and your family or your teachers and counsellors are, are not able to help you uh, uh, effectively, then you might need to uh, you know, seek help from a mental health professional. Yeah. One of the quote might be that uh, pain and suffering are different, right? Uh, and pain is a part and parcel of life. We all have painful moments in our life uh, that comes in the form of stress, losses, uh, breakups, maybe failures at school, disappointments with friends and family. Uh, so pain and difficult emotions are part and parcel of life. However, Suffering is a different concept altogether. And a lot of times, we can choose whether or not to suffer beyond the pain that we have to tolerate. So if you have a lot of pain in your life and you find yourself suffering uh, to, a, to a big extent, uh, uh, perhaps it's good to seek help from a mental health professional so you can reduce the level of unnecessary suffering and learn to deal and cope with the pain more effectively.